Well, good morning and welcome. It is such a pleasure that we can be together, both together in person and all those who are online. We're thankful for your presence today and ask that you'd join with us as we study together in God's Word. Trust me, I've got this. I imagine all of us have probably heard that statement said by someone before. And in that moment, you make a choice of whether or not you're going to believe that person. And you make that choice based on the evidence that you know about that person. Reality is, is that faithfulness is the foundation for, I would say, any relationship. You see, if this is a politician making that statement, you're probably not going to believe them. But if maybe it's your spouse or your parents, you tend to put your trust in them. Why is it a choice? Why do we have to say, are they or aren't they going to stick to their word? Well, we, as people, aren't 100% faithful. We let others down, even those whom we love. But what about God? Is God faithful? That's what we want to look at this morning. You see, we, I think oftentimes we, we begin to start to wonder and say, well, wait a minute. If I can't live out absolutes, then is God really able to do that? Many times when things go bad, when finances dry up, when hopes are fading, when relationships crumble, that's when we begin to ask that question, is he really going to see me through this? And so we want to look at that idea of God's faithfulness this morning. Now let's just begin by sort of looking at the word faithfulness. The Hebrew word there means steadfast, firmness, fidelity, or steadiness. And what we would say is the person who would be faithful is dedicated or dependable. That they are able to be trusted. And there's this connection with the idea of truth when we think of someone who is faithful. The opposite of this would be someone who is always changing. We, we use the word wishy-washy to say, you know, that we, we don't know about this. What about some examples of faithfulness? Well, we actually named a geyser Old Faithful. As I was reading up on it, this Old Faithful, the reason they call it that is because it erupts some about around 20 times a day. And they are able to predict when it will erupt with a 90% confidence level. And they will predict it within a 10-minute variation of range. So with, they can tell you, down to a 10-minute variable, this is when Old Faithful is going to erupt this time. That's pretty good, a 90% confidence level. But let me ask you this. If you go to your bank and you cash a check and you're bank teller gives you the right amount of money back 90% of the time, would you say that they are faithful? We probably would say no. You see, faithfulness goes much more than just an idea of being dedicated. It goes to the idea of being unchanging. And that there's a sense of trustworthiness that is based upon proven experience. 
God describes himself as faithful. He is one who deals in absolutes. Look at how he describes himself. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9, there it says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. In Deuteronomy 32, in verse 4, it says, The rock, why would you use a rock to describe God? Because a rock doesn't change. It's always usually a rock. The rock, his work is perfect for all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. Psalm 100 and verse 5, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Notice the absolutes that we see here. It says, for all his ways are just just, that he is a God of faithfulness and that he is without injustice, or we might say no wrongs. I can't say that of myself. I can't say that I have never done anything wrong, but this is the absolute that God uses to describe himself. And he says he is faithful to all generations, not one generation, not not two All generations. You see, God is saying that this is who he is. This is his nature. It is unchanging. This is his character. And his ways and his purposes remain the same. To go further, we see that God continually says truth. That he is not going to ever go against what he says. And what he says always comes to pass. Notice what it says there in Numbers 23 and verse 19. Here this is uh, Balaam. If you will remember, Balaam was called by Balak to to call and, and bring a curse on Israel. But every time he would do it, God gave him a blessing. And he says there in Numbers 23 and verse 19, God is not man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? You see, God has, he never has a need to say something other than what is true. One person said it this way. God is not tempted to lie. No one can catch him in a compromising position or give him an opportunity to make himself appear more impressive by making up false accomplishments or attributes. He is perfect in every way. So even if his character did permit him to lie, the potential for personal gain, which serves as many people's motivation to lie, would not affect him. Well, what that means then is that we can know for certain what he says will come to pass. He's going to do that. But not just what he says, but also what he does. His faithfulness is the foundation of everything that he does. There in Psalm 33 and verse 4, it says, For the word of the Lord is upright. And all his work is done in faithfulness. What we'd say there is that every act of God that he has done, is doing, and will do flows out of his faithfulness. That everything he does is reliable, it is dependable, it is consistent. Because he is unchanging. He never does anything that goes against who he is. And even to the point that if we are unfaithful, God remains true to himself. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13 there it says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. 
A lot of times that's how humans base faithfulness. I'll continue to do something for you as long as you continue to do something for me. But the moment that that you stop doing that, that's when I'm going to stop doing something for you. That's not who God is. God says it it doesn't matter if you stop loving me. I can't be unfaithful because that would be untrue to my character. Untrue to my nature. God is all sufficient. And so he doesn't need our faithfulness to make him faithful. And so we see this God who is faithful. But the real question for us is how can we know that he is faithful? Yeah, I I understand that that, that God is making that statement, but how can I personally know God is faithful? I want to give you three things that I think help us to understand His faithfulness to us. First is we study His Word. Because in studying His Word, we see a pattern emerge. That the more that we read about God, the more that we see that He has never failed in the past. That when He said He would do something, He did it. Think about all the different stories we have. All the different accounts, and I hate to even say stories because that makes it almost seem like they're not true. All the different accounts of people throughout history. Think about Abraham. God said, hey, Abraham, you're going to have a son. Abraham kept waiting and waiting, waiting. When he got 100 years old, he had a son. God said, this son is going to become a great nation. Some 400 and plus years later, the nation is delivered out of Egyptian bondage. And God is delivering them as they're wandering around in the wilderness. He's providing manna for them. He's providing quail. He's providing water. Their shoes, they never wear out. Continually, God is saying, what I say I will do. He brings them. He says, he promises Abraham, he says, you're gonna, your descendants are going to have this land that you're wandering around in right now. They're brought into the land of Canaan. God says to Abraham, in you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. That statement goes back to the very statement that God made to Adam and Eve in the very beginning when they are in the garden after they have sinned. He says, I am going to send one to crush the head of Satan, and deal with our sins. God brought that about. And so over and over again, what we see is, the more that we see what He has done in the past, it makes it easier to trust what He does in the future. You see, God will be true to Himself. He will always be God, which means He will always be sovereign. He will always be holy. He will always be good. And in His Word, we come to know the person of God and what He has done for us. And that, I think, goes back to something that that I said last week. Is that we begin to start to see God's Word as His love letters to us rather than a rule book that we just sort of, you know, okay, yeah, I've done this, this command. I've done this command. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got that. But that we see this is him writing to us to show us his love. I mean, just think about all the promises that God gives to us to get to you. This is just a 
I, I mean, I had so many more passages, and that even is just a small inkling of all of the promises that God gives to us. But notice what, what is written here. Psalm 103, verse 11, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. That is his promise to you. Jesus said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In 1 John, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 3, But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Boy, we can hold on to that one. If I am His child, He says, I will protect you from Satan. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will never fear. What can man do to me? Those are promises that the Almighty makes to you and to me. Individually. Personally, he says, this is what I will do for you. How can we know? Not only studying his word, but we look to our own lives. Many times God calls us to remember. Joshua did that as he is fading away, his, his life is ending, and he's going to challenge the children of Israel. In Joshua 23, verse 14, he says, Now behold, today I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one word of all the good works which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. All have been fulfilled for you, not one of them, has failed. Joshua calls him. He says, look back to your history. Look back to everything that God has said he would do. Joshua says, he didn't let one thing slip. There's never one time where God says, well, I gave you 90% of the things I said I was going to do. Can I mess up a little bit? He says, no, all of it was done for you. So I ask you, back over this past year, as bad as it was, I want you to look back into your life and see where God was faithful to you. And I think the more that we can do that, the more is really where what really comes to mind of what we talked about last week, of that idea of do I believe in God or do I believe God? Can I experience God as a person? Or is he just an idea? You see, if faithfulness is just an idea to you, it becomes very cold and very unfeeling. It's hard to go back and say, well, where do I see faithfulness in my life? But if God is a person to you, you can look back and see where there were times where you were weak and you needed strength. And he provided it for you. He got you through that moment. You can look back to those times where you have prayed and prayed and prayed. And God has answered your prayers. Because he is faithful. 
He knows your situation. He knows what you're going through. He says, I will provide. You see, he is working for our best interest. And he will cause all things to work together for good to those that love him. You see, seeing God's past faithfulness helps us trust his future faithfulness. I want us to see, and how can we know, is that we learn to see him around us. And sometimes we have to learn to distinguish his voice from all the other competing voices that we have in our lives. And I truly believe that God speaks most prominently in His Word. But I think He also speaks to us through other people, through circumstances, through creation itself. In Psalms 189, verse 37. There God is speaking and He's talking about the covenant that He made with David. And he says there, it shall be established forever like the moon. And the witness in the sky is faithful. Do you realize that God says, the moon is my witness to my faithfulness? You think about just what the moon does and how it interacts with our world. It impacts the tides. It has that impact on, on the waves. You think about the waves. If you just go to the, to the beach, the waves crashing one after the other, after the other, that's faithfulness. They're unchanging in the sense they're continually rolling in. God is saying, I have made creation to be my witness that I will do what I have said I will do. Such that over and over and over again, we build trust in God's faithfulness by claiming His promises and applying them to our lives. And we say, well, wait a minute. Why does all of this matter? What's the point of, of studying God's Word? What's the point of looking into my life and seeing God working? What's the point of seeing God around me? It's because those things help confirm His faithfulness in our life. Because here's the reality. God is faithful. That's a fact. What is in question is whether or not I believe in His faithfulness. So that when difficult, troubling times come, when relationships shatter, when the money all but dries up, when the diagnosis comes back worse than what we expected, when everything is out of of our control. Those are the times when those thoughts creep into our heads. Is he really going to do what he said? Is he really going to hold to his promises? Is God going to see me through this? Will he hold me fast? It is in those moments that we can come back and reassure ourselves, yes, he is faithful. Yes, he will do what he has promised. Yes, he will get you through this moment. And he will be with you throughout every moment. If we are His children. See, that's 
the promises that He makes to us. And He has been faithful in the greatest way possible because He says, I will deal with your sin by sending My Son. Greatest act of faithfulness in Him coming and dying for our sin. Proving His faithfulness to us that He will do what He says. This morning, how much do you trust in His faithfulness? God remains faithful. He will do what He says. It is a matter of whether we will trust in Him or do we trust in ourselves. If you're struggling with that this morning, if you need prayers, if you need to become His child, won't you come?